Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to my Friday morning's live stream about RP accent, go with the flow. Uh, you might be aware it is an ongoing class and uh, this class takes place every Friday morning if you get time. And if you're interested, you may join. I've just shared the link at the top of the comment section. And possibly you may get two free lessons. Uh, I have the reasons to believe that you know, if you join this lesson, there is much chances for you to develop your pronunciations, your sound. And uh, I'm sure that you may be aware that when you speak, many of your words are not really pronounced correctly. Uh, there may be a few reasons. Number one, there is, you know, it may have the impact of the mother tongue, your own language. Number two, stressing on the wrong place, on the wrong vowel sound. And number three, probably you know how to pronounce the sound, but when you're trying to use it in a sentence or having conversation, most probably you forget the you know, correct point of the intonation. So this is the reason this class has been designed for all of the learners from different levels, starting from the beginner to intermediate to advanced however this class is mostly for those people who are already uh, aware of the rules of the pronunciation techniques and my main focus is to help you and develop your rp accents as you might be our rp stands for receipt pronunciation and it's a matter of practice matter of dedication matter of imitation imitation method or technique is one of the amazing ways through which you can always achieve your right sound so let's move on uh, okay Last week, <clears throat> we explained, excuse me, um, the different types of syllables. So we are going to emphasize a little bit more. To pronounce word, we push air from a lungs up. Okay, this chain sound we are making. Hang on a second. Accuracy and variety. What steps can be challenging with different forms of parser piece of the same word, word family? Uh, which means that when you are pronouncing a word, for example, this word, then this is the name of a country, and this is Canada, right? You may have noticed that we're stressing on. Hang on a second. Let me share the. Phonetic symbol. So this is the phonetic symbol of the pronunciation Canada and you may have noticed there is a diphthong and schwa sound. Now Canada is a noun.
if you want to make it adjective so what would be the adjective of the word Canada and obviously you'll say it would be this one uh, which is Canadian did you notice that now we are stressing on D in Canada our stress is on a can a da and you may have noticed that is short sound after N the A before D is a short sound that's why and the A after D is also short sound Canada and I'm sure you are aware of the were this uh, feature sure sound sure sound is the lazy sound which is a kind of vowel sound but it is the special sound of english phonetics which is pronounced sometimes it is pronounced very softly or weakly and when we are pronouncing canadian then deep tongue is gone. Once again, look at the phonetic symbol Canada. Ka, a sound is there. Then short sound a, uh, can a, uh, da. But Canadian. Now the deep tongue has become, you know, short sound, which is why it become can, can, rather than can, canane. We're stressing on the a, but it sounds like a Canadian so what stands can be challenging with different forms of passage of the same word so this is one of the examples please bear in mind that when we know the different kinds of words or word family then uh, obviously we must change the stressed part and that is the uh, you know, unique importance of learning pronunciation, uh, which is why very often you will notice that your sounds do not seem to be authentic. Your sounds do not seem to be accurate because the stress is on the wrong vowel sound. All right, so what stress now? To understand what stress helps to understand syllables and we have i have i should say explained syllables already i explained last week the week before every word is made from syllables in english we do not say each syllable with the same force or strength in one word we accentuate one syllable we say one syllable very loudly, big, strong, important, and all other syllables are very quietly. For instance, let's take the three words. Okay, this would be an ideal example. look at this same word but it's changing photograph so it's photograph not photo even fo there is o sound British IPA and American IPA this T sounds flap T so it is photograph but it is photograph and also R we are using in photograph in British IPA whereas Americans are using uh, diphthong R sound or S sound 
All right, let's share the phonetic symbols. Photograph, but photograph. Did you notice the sound? As long as your ear has an analytical power, you'll be able to distinguish the sounds. So it's photograph, photograph. And the next one is, mm -hmm. how to pronounce it guys? Photographer, did you see the stressed plus changed? Photo, photo, it's stressing on photographer, British IPA. In American IP, photographer, graphic, as sound. Once again, the British R sound becomes as sound in American IPA. So, share this phonetics as well so that you can compare how their sounds are different even in those two different English languages. So, photographer, photograph, but photographer, and the last word, uh, let me see, this is another adjective, photographic. I know that there are some people who want to make comments and want to participate. Everyone is welcome. But as a matter of fact, because of the Hello policy, you can't just comment it. Hello has made restrictions. Only my subscribers or the new users who have got that green sprout leaves may join and comment. However, if you are interested, you are welcome to join me. Join me from this link. Okay, if you don't subscribe to my lesson, there is no way you can come and comment. This is the new update from the Hello. Uh, however, I've got only one subscriber of this session. If the person is busy, the person won't come, but the person might be able to see it later. Bear in mind that when you have subscribed to your lesson, you can watch the recorded video until that period your subscription is okay and all right. When your subscription is over, you can't watch those videos. You know, our IT has developed automatically locking up that non subscribers are not able to watch those videos which they have not subscribed. And for the subscribers, you know, you have got a specific point of time and after them it would be locked automatically. Hello, Shivam Kumar, welcome. So that's the rule, guys, okay? So it's photograph, photographer, photographic. You see the stresses are changing. Do they sound the same when, you, when spoken? No because we accentuate the stress one syllable in each word and it is not always the same and it is not always the same syllable so the shape of each word is different listen to these words again photo three words okay so we are stressing first syllable I mean first letter, stress number one. When it is four syllables, we're stressing in two, like photographic, photographer. So
So we have to remember there are rules when and how to stress. If it is three words or three syllables, we stress on the first part. If it is four syllables, we stress on the second part. If it is four syllables or sometimes we stress on the third part too. Uh, actually, it is photographer, photograph. Oh, I have written something incorrectly. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so three syllables, photograph. Four syllables, photograph. Mm -hmm. So when it's noun or adjective or any other parts of speech, the stressing places are always changing. So we need to be careful. This happens in all words with two or more syllables. So these are the wider examples. If there are this rule, so three letter word stress one. Okay, I mean three syllabic word, four syllables stress number two, four syllables but uh, different parts of base stress number three. For example, teacher. Japan, not Japan, he says stressing the second part. Japan, you see, if you remember this rule, this is very easy for you. All right, and likewise, is it China or China? What do you think, guys? So, it's really good test and good way to practice. Teacher, Japan. China or China. You see, it is China. Even in Chai, there is no A sound, but E sound. But you see, this is the uh, amazing part of English language. Though there is a sound, it becomes I sound, China. Sometimes I have heard that people are saying China. No, China, a verb. You're stressing the second part. Eh? Conversation, interesting. Okay, how about A, B, A, B. A verb, you say. Next one is conversation. All right, Shivam Kumar, you need to know syllables. That's what I've explained. Three syllables, four syllables, monosyllable bisyllable okay monosyllable there is no stress words that have got two letters in their spelling and words that have got three letters in their spelling okay so you need to understand syllables these all are related to syllables next one is interesting this is another commonly mispronounced word. People say interesting, no, it's interesting. Important. Now, these sounds which I'm trying to pronounce, these are according to the RP accent receptor pronunciation, which is the part of the British English. Uh, bear in mind that American pronunciation might be different. Disclaimer. Demand. You see, we're stressing the second part, etc. etc. I've written three types, eh? <laughs> etc. etc. And also, the best way to find out 
go to the individual dictionary, write the word, try to listen it and imitate it. Imitation is one of the amazing techniques to develop your pronunciation and speaking. Bear in mind that pronunciation is the most hardest part of English learning and it should be coming at the end of your learning plan uh, because most of the cases our, our learners are not fluent. They haven't got wider ranges of vocab and also many a time they make mistakes using them correctly and also wider ranges of expression. Uh, bear in mind that pronunciation is just a part of your learning. This is one of the most important and fourth parts. The other three parts are once again fluency and cohesion, which means that when you speak, you speak about the topic only. Fluency is the speed and cohesion is the discussion of the topic. Number two is vocabs. So different kinds of vocabs are there. It could be synonyms or antonyms or it could be a phrasal verbs or phrases or group verbs or collocation or it could be a dialect that might be used and allowed in our daily conversation. Uh, please bear in mind that at the end of the day, you know, our final target would be developing our English language. And as soon as you know the weaker part, it will be easier for you to move from there. So uh, most of the cases I find that learners can find out their weaker parts. Okay. So uh, demand, yeah, etc. The syllables that are not stressed are weak or small or quiet. Fluent speakers of English listen for the stressed syllables, not the weak syllables. Remember, we have to listen to the stressed syllables where we are emphasizing. If you use word stress in your speech, you will instantly and automatically improve your pronunciation and your comprehension. Uh, exactly, remember that you need to find out the stressed part so that you know how to pronounce and depending on the stressing one sentence may sound like differently uh, let me give you a an easy example like oh, for example your name is say Rahad Ali I'm giving my example so you are Rahad Ali look it's a normal expression you are Rahad Ali look I'm stressing you are Rahad Ali look look at depending on the tone and stressing one sentence may have different types of expression. One is question, one is general explanation, another is shock, another is surprise. Okay? Try to hear the stress in individual words each time you listen to English on the radio or in films. Your first step is to hear and recognize it. After that, you can use it. So there are two very important rules about word stress. One word, one stress. One word cannot have two stresses. So if you hear two stresses, you have heard two words. So <clears throat> please, once again, these are very important rules for you to understand where and how to stress. Each word has <clears throat> just single stress. So one word, one stress. This stress is always on a vowel, not on consonant or the vowel sound. Where to stress and how to stress. If you're not sure what to stress, it is better to refer to a dictionary. That's right, this I say every time. Sentence stress, intonation, avoid monotone intonation. Chunking is an amazing technique. Okay. 
don't rush as it is one of the common mistakes. It might keep sounds and words accurately. Uh, honestly guys, I've seen many speakers uh, in my classes on this app, on Facebook and many other places. They've got trends to speak faster. Do not do that guys. It really creates problem for your English speaking and it may have impact in different ways. Number one, there's much chance that you might make mistake. Number two, you may, know, you may not be able to pronounce the words correctly. You may not give the stress on the right word. And ob obviously if, you, if your audience can't understand you because of its speed is speaking, then your communication is lost somewhere which you don't want. You want your audience to be understood, okay? You want your readers to understand your writing. So whenever you are writing or whenever you are speaking, make sure you follow this pronunciation techniques. All right, so vowels can be monotongues, diphthongs or triptongs. To understand these terms, we must first understand what a syllable is, that best way to explain. We have explained syllables already, but again, I'm reiterating. Mouse, rabbit, kangaroo, barracuda, hippopotamus. Look, there is single syllable, two syllables and rabbit. Kangaroo, you can see that it has been broken in three parts in the phonetic symbol. Barracuda, hippopotamus. As you can hear, a syllable is a unit of pronunciation. If you say that a word has one syllable or two syllables, that says something about the rhythmic character of the word. Uh, we have to understand that English language is like a rhythm. It goes ups and downs like musical notes. Okay, and uh, obviously you have got some, uh, I should say, uh, the technique of listening to it carefully. Always bear in mind that whatever you learn from a teacher or from a tutor or from any other student, uh, you need to practice. Practice is the key factor. It's not only for learning English, for anything else, guys. If you are studying anything, any subject in undergraduate or graduate level, or postgraduate or postdoctoral level, you have to give time. You have to find out some time. You have to manage it. And uh, definitely, all successful people, if you ever uh, analyze their you know uh, biography, you'll be able to find out them. They were all, you know, hard worker. Success doesn't come automatically. You have to get it by dedicating hard work, time, efforts, perseverance, as well as your broader interest to learn and move forward. If you haven't got any interest at all, there is no way you can be successful. There is no way you can move forward. Okay, so any word must have at least one syllable, even though A has one syllable. A word has two syllables when there are two vowel sounds divided by a consonant sound. Or to put in another way, two vowel sounds connected by a consonant sound. A word has three syllables when there are three vowel sounds. 
uh, divided or connected by two consonant cells and so on. If you say that a word has one syllable and two syllables is something about the rhythmic character of the word. Let's take the word O double C E or occur. Here we have two vowels sha sound eh, and a oka which are divided by the consonant sound k. So I'm making it akha. This is two syllable word. If you look again the word rabbit, we see the same structure. There are two vowel sounds in this word a and a. And between these two vowel sounds is a consonant sound by making a rabbit is two syllable word. Okay. Because it contains two vowel sounds with a consonant sound between them. There are two other consonant sounds in rabbit, R at the beginning of the first syllable, and T, a ta at the end of the second syllable. But these sounds do not affect the syllable structures of the word rabbit. Monophthongs, diphthongs, and traphthongs. Let's move on. Now that we understand uh, what a syllable is, uh, we can look at monophthongs and diphthongs. A monophthong. is where there is one vowel sound in a syllable and for a diphthong is where there are two vowel sounds in a syllable. Say the word funny out loud. As you can hear is funny we have two vowel sounds ah and eh funny divided into two syllables by the consonant sound and so we can say that funny contains two monotones a ah and a. Eh. Now say the word guy. Here we have the same two vowel sounds. This time they are stuck together in one syllable without any consonant dividing them. So we can say that a guy contains one diphthong a, ah, a eh, and a. Eh. I guy. To put it simply, a monophthong is a single vowel and diphthong is a double vowel. Mon okay. Alright, uh, I've written it twice. Let's look another example. Sorry. The word. Is it behind or behind? What do you think, guys? Behind. Look behind you. So it is behind. So in behind there are three vowel sounds. Eh? A, A, and I. E, A, I. Behind. The e eh is on its own, separate from the other two vowel sounds, by the consonant sound H. However, A and I are stuck together to make it double vowel. Behind I, which is the same diphthong in the word guy. So the word behind has three basic vowel sounds divided into two syllables. 
the first of which contains a monom tongues, e, eh, which is sure sound, the second of which contains diphthongs i, which is behind. Okay, guys, so <clears throat> let me finish it quickly. So, dear viewers, at the moment, Hala has offered 30% discount, and the discount code is Mr. Wonderful. So, all the public live classes, not the public labs, all the live classes one-on-one -on -one private lessons if you use this code you'll get 30 percent discounts this off hour is valid up to 7th of august so we make a question here that um can we book for the next five six months with the same code yes as long as you book before uh, 7th of august you can get this you know, discount easily Okay. And if it and after that, you know, I can see the new update says if you subscribe for two months, you get five percent discount, three months, five percent discount. If it is four months, ten percent, fifth month, ten percent as well. But if you like to subscribe for six months, you'll get fifteen percent. Six and seven months are same. If you sub like eight months, if you subscribe to a teacher eight months or more, you get twenty percent discount. That's really pretty cool. So, uh, if it will be better for you if you subscribe to any teacher, at least uh, eight months, which means for every month you get twenty percent discount. And uh, if the subscription fee is, let me calculate. $16 and you get 20% discount so it becomes $12.8 so if you decide to subscribe to teacher for eight months and the regular price would be eight by 16 is 128 but with the normal promotion uh, you get 20 percent discount so you are saving 20, 25 dollars and 60 cents but if you use uh, mr wonderful as a code you're saving $38, one third, which is really pretty cool. Okay, 
So, dear viewers, uh, let's move on. Behind. So, in English, we also have a couple of triple vowels called triptongs, such as the word fire. Okay. like a i e sound in fire uh, once again very often people ask me to differentiate the british english sound and american sounds first and foremost two differences are letter r and letter t remember these are the two letters that will uh, enable you to understand the differentiations so it's fire so which is three vowels and like a a a and shos and o fire together in one syllable fire and definitely this is according to british english but american will say fire because r should be pronounced because they are rhotic English speaker, and whereas British English is non rhotic English. Rhotic English, US, and non rhotic UK. everything's connected at this point you might be feeling that this is get quite complicated but remember all of the diphthongs and triptongs are made from the monophthongs so if you understand monophthongs clearly there shouldn't be any problem uh, for instance the diphthong i is the word guy is made from two monophthongs a and i r and i so once you learn the monophthongs, the diphthongs and triptongs are quite easy. Also for the monophthongs, four of the monophthongs, I'm sorry, not for the monophthongs. In English are simply shorter versions of other monophthongs. For example, we have R, long R as in R, and short as in op. Again, long A is like air. Short A as an egg. Once you learn the long version, it is easy to do the short version. All the 24 vowel sounds are derived from only one, only 10 basic sounds. Every single word in English, regardless of its spelling, is pronounced using some combination of these 10 sounds. Okay. These ten basic sounds are a, r, e, r, e, 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 u, u, o, a. All the twenty-four vowel sounds are derived from the only ten basic. Okay. It has been copied twice. So one was so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see again, a a e e o o a i a e e a. These are the combinations of all vowel cells. 
All right. All right, guys. So thank you very much for joining me. But as I say, some people might think that this is an advanced class, and obviously I feel that it is an advanced lesson. In order to understand pronunciation, you must have very good and thorough knowledge about the English words, how they are spelled, and also the concept of syllables, which helps you understand. Okay, so these are some examples. We practice short and long sounds. I, short I and longer I sounds. Remember, this is the way you can understand. If there are two dots, that is longer. Some examples are like bit, bait, hit, hate, kit, kate, bin, bane, ship, shape. Remember, longer sound means you have to uh, hold the ear a little bit longer, like bit, shorter, bit, we are prolonging by, holding the breathing a little bit more. So once again, guys, you're watching this live stream from the UK and our local time is 7.16 a.m. Friday morning, happy Friday to those people who are celebrating as a holiday in their country. But in the Western countries, the holiday and weekends are Saturday and Sunday. So Friday is a normal working day. And if you are interested to join once again, uh, join from this link as I pinned on the top of this comment section. And you never know, you may be eligible to get two free lessons. Uh, Please bear in mind that practice is the key word and key factor to develop your English language. Okay. And as you might be aware, there is 30% discount going on with the discount code Mr. Wonderful. And you may use it while you're subscribing to your teacher with the money. Okay, this code is also applicable for your one on one lesson, which is a private lesson, and all the live classes. Uh, according to new Hello update, only the new users who have got Sprout lip sign beside their names, and my subscribers can comment me. You'll not be able to comment. You'll not be able to even uh, join here unless you have got money. Hello, Ibrahim. You're very welcome. Happy Friday to you. Uh, we are almost at the end of the lesson, guys. Thank you very much for being here, for watching it silently. I know that many of you are interested to even comment, but you can't because it says to subscribe. That is the new update. Okay, still have got a few minutes. Let's finish a little bit more. Long vowels sound like the vowel name itself. A, E, I, O, U is U sound. So long I sounds like I in the mea mile. Short vowels sound, sound different from the long sounds. Short I sounds like the I in mill in this lesson. Let's learn spell a bunch of words with either short or long I sounds. Short I sounds fit, river, invent, still, animal, minimum. Long I sounds. Idea. Look, idea. Library. I. Design. 
final, title, primary, primitive. Sometimes letter I plus consonant long sound like mobile, drive, thrive, strive, live, bribe, describe, prescribe. Um, some just that I just make long as like bright, fight, might, light, tight, slight, night, high, highway. History of K and the cluster. We have to discuss it some other time. Sometimes letter Y makes a long sound like hydrogen, July, apply, reapply, multiply, supply. Okay, any other questions guys? I know that you can't make comments because you're not my subscriber. Okay, let's finish it quickly. Sometimes the letter I make the long sound like Thai, pie, fried, like fried rice, fries, replied. Sometimes I in the mid cluster in this look long sound like mind, kind, rewind, grinder. Sometimes I in the word cluster, I, G, and lungs are like design, resign, align. Words that take bile at the end and become longer sound, like bite, bit but bite, kate but kite, fin but fine, din but dine. Adding another letter before AT makes longer sound. Like hate, rate, date, mate, plate, sate. Are you all right, mate? For example, yeah. Mm -hmm. May I have a bottle of water, please? If the R is at the beginning of our sound, all right, I've given the example when R must be pronounced in British English. If the word starts with the letter R, obviously you have to pronounce R. Okay, but if the R is second, third, or fourth, or the last letter, we do not pronounce it normally. Okay. Okay, guys, so that should be the end for today's lesson. Thank you very much for joining once again. Uh, Abraham has a question, what does HID?
it is the past simple of hide okay Ibrahim the present the main form is hide present is hide hid hidden so hide is the present form I'm writing it for you hide hate hidden so that's the past form of the verb hide uh, bear in mind that whatever you have learned today from this lesson try to use it practice it and apply in your conversation so that you can develop your pronunciation bear in mind that the best american teacher or the british teacher can give you lessons guidelines classes but at the end of the day at the end of the day once again it is you who must practice it you can change only yourself no one but you you must have strong desire you must have strong interest and you must have enough time to practice keep your notebook write there practice there and you feel your difference after a few months uh, please bear in mind that success doesn't come automatically it's a matter of dedication a matter of being passion enthusiasm as well as strong desire for learning and that's true that we make mistakes but don't get stuck in the mistakes learn from it as long as you can learn from the mistakes and you promise to yourself that i have made a mistake that's fine but i've learned it and you don't want to make the same mistake in the future again then obviously your learning gum would be going up your learning line would be going up and up like this okay thank you very much once again uh ibrahim this class is only every friday morning this pronunciation class my other classes are you have to check from my profile tonight one class and the next whole week there is no class because i'm on on holiday so tonight my next class and other classes will be uh, next friday morning and so on there are classes about grammar vocab spoken english ielts coaching and basic british ipa so i try to help and i try to give information to all of our learners about different kinds of topics including once again grammar ielts both academic and general and basic british ipa but as i said whatever you learn practice it practice is the key factor you won't be perfect no one is perfect guys remember even the natives are not perfect either but practice gives you progress practice develops your confidence level practice boosts up your inspiration and motivation and practice always shows you how you can be successful so your target uh, is to be a good speaker and my intention is to help you as a teacher and uh, obviously i must say it uh, publicly i'm one of the uh, senior active teachers of this app and there are other teachers too and i try to mention their names every time the first and foremost senior teacher is our ceo june okay the next one is the american teacher hayley then Canadian teacher Ryan, then Kurdish teacher Ahmed, then US teacher Julie, and me, I'm from the United Kingdom, as you might be aware. Okay, and these are the most senior but active teachers. Is there any class to ask about a word that we have encountered, didn't understand? I try to help in every class, Ibrahim so don't worry even if you subscribe to any class you have got any problems my target is to help our students it doesn't matter what the problem is okay thank you very much once again and thanks for being here uh, guys please follow me support me and support all of our hello teachers without the viewers teachers are nothing because viewers are the heart of our live streams all right practice every day and grow yourself 
learn something today which may be helpful for your academic life, for your professionalism, for your communication skill. Thank you very much once again and happy Friday to all the people who are celebrating as a holiday. You take care and bye.